Recording in progress. Today's staff we're going to be learning is Mohit Katan Yutet. Today's staff is sponsored by Carol Robinson and Arthur Gould in loving memory of Carol's mother, Irma Robinson, Huda Bat Moshe Zichronah Levracha. Today is her seventh year at site. Irma moved from New Haven to Chicago to marry Lou and build a rich life there, including lifelong friends, work she loved at a nearby high school library, and active participation in her synagogue. She lived with Alzheimer for seven years with dignity and strength and never forgot Carol or her sister. She would be very proud of Carol studying Dafyomi. Okay, we're going to start today. We'll review the Mishnah briefly from the bottom of Yuchet Amabet. The first we started with Ein Kotvin Shtarei Chov B'moed. You can't write promissory notes. You may know, mommy, no, but there were some certain exceptions. If you didn't trust the guy or if the, the scribe needed work, then you could. Other things you can't write, in kutvin svarim tefillin or mezuzot b'moed. You can't write books, tefillin, or mezuzos. Ve'en megihin ot echad afilu b'sefer Ezra. And you can't even edit one word from uh, Sefer Torah, even the one of Ezra. We discussed what that was yesterday. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, kotev adam tefillin u mezuzot la'atzmo, v'tove al yerechot chelet l'tzitzito. Rabbi Yehuda seems to all of a sudden permit things for the purposes of a mitzvah. If you need tefillin, mezuzah, or tzitzit, so you're allowed to write for yourself the tefillin, the mezuzah, or to, to spin the thread for the tzitzit. We'll talk about spinning, spinning the wool soon on your lap, okay, or on your leg, okay? Basically using your leg to spin the thread. Okay, normally you'd use a spindle or some other type of equipment. We'll get to that soon in the Gemara. Here we're saying, this is your classic example of a shinoi, different than your typical manner. It's not a very um, great method of doing it, right? It doesn't work as well, but we're going to permit that kind of way of doing it if you need for tzitzit. Now, why not a Sefer Torah? So first of all, you could say tefillin and mezuzot are something more personal of use. You don't necessarily need a Sefer Torah. Some people distinguish between Torah is for learning. So there's no goal to having a Torah. The goal is to use it for learning. Whereas the tefillin and mezuzot, there might be a mitzvah in and of themselves of the writing of it or the tzitzit of the making of it. Um, but the truth is there is a mitzvah for writing a Sefer Torah. So I'm not sure exactly... Um, how that distinction goes about, but more that the Torah is a means to use for something else, for learning, whereas the others are a means for the mitzvah in and of itself. Tanu Rabbanat. Now there's a bright that says, Kotev adam tefillin u'mezuzo l'atzmo v'tovel yerechot schelet l'tzitzito. Okay, this sounds very much like Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. You can write tefillin u'mezuzo for yourself and spin the wool on your leg on your for the tzitzit. But they add one more thing here. For other people, you could do it bitova. That means you can't do it for selling to them, but you can do it as a favor. So you're allowed to do that for other people. Divrei Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, he was the one who appeared in our Mishnah, but this didn't appear in the Mishnah. Ma'arim, he said just you could do it for yourself. So since you could do it for yourself, he adds here in this Brayta, Ma'arim, you can do a little bit of trickery, like a halachic loophole, which is what? Mocher et shelo, you can sell yours. And then, chazer v'kotev l'atzmo. Since the, you can do it for yourself, if you, but if you have, you don't need. So what do you do? Sell your own, and then you can write for yourself. So that's a way that if you wanted to write to sell, you could actually do it in that manner. Because in the end, you're left with, I need for myself, so I'm writing for myself. We talked about before this concept of ha'arama, of kind of finding a legal loophole to get out of, you know, if you really need to do something. So here you see how they bend the rules in as long as at that given moment you need it for what it's permitted, which is I need it for myself and that's permitted, then it's okay. If you, right, nobody says you can't sell what you have, so you sell what you have and then you have a need. You can write and sell in a normal manner as long as you need it for your parnasa, for your sustenance. Now, what does parnasa mean? Until now, we were talking about, if you remember recently, we've discussed part, there was one side, which is you need it for food. Now, kadeh parnasa doesn't use the same language as you don't have any food to put on the table. On the other hand, we have laharvacha, which is to make a profit. So kadeh parnasa must be somewhere in between, which is you need it for your livelihood, but it could be, it's a little bit extra to keep you going for the next day, for the next week, or to have a few other items, but without moving into the category of luxury, you know, and it's just for profit. So we have this 
three-way machloket in the Brayta, which again is added to the opinions in our Mishnah. We saw in our Mishnah, for example, you can't write in them at all. And yet here, they all seem to permit it. The question is just in what way and how. So who do we hold like? The halacha is, you can do it like Rabbi Yossi in order to make a living, no problem, the lenient opinion. Right, you see here, by the way, that when it came to Cholomoe, just like we saw with Avilut, there was this general tendency to be more lenient about things. Um... So now we're going to see a bright about this. Tano Rabbana. And again, different opinions. But you can't use a stone. By the way, I recommend Googling videos on how to spin thread um, manually. And you'll see different ways, like how to make a spindle, uh, a portable one, you know, a very easy one. What you'll learn is by doing that is that the idea is to basically take the wool, right, which is very... Um, I don't even know the word, but it's right. It's wool. It's all over the place kind of thing. And you want to turn it into this one strand. So you have to twist it and do all sorts of things. So now a spindle twists around and it's a very easy way to do it. It spins. So that's why we call it spinning thread. But you can also attach a stone, which is heavy and pulls down and use that to kind of pull it down and do it. And you can also even do it, like we saw in your lap, you can do it by hand really. Okay. So what we're going to see is a different different opinions about it. So according to the first opinion, you could do it with on your leg, but not be even, okay, not with a stone. That's going to be a problem. The rabbis say even with an even, okay, even with a stone. Rabbi Yehuda Omer Mishmo, he said in the name of Rabbi Eliezer, Be'even, Avalo Be'pelech, you could do it with a stone, but you can't do it with a spindle. So the question is, right, again, do we say, on your, you know, by hand, yes, but not with a stone. Do we say even your hand in a stone, but not a pelech, right? So, um, and the rabbi said even be'even, they didn't really specify whether they meant with a spindle as well. The chachamim, oh, so that's the way they're going to say now. And chachamim omrim be'en be'even, be'en be'pelech. The rabbi seem to really a, a, allow any kind of way of doing it. They have no problem with spinning thread as long as it's for the tzitzit. So let's see how we hold. He's lenient on both issues, the one we mentioned earlier before, and now this issue, both we're going to be lenient on. Okay, again, leniency. New Mishnah. Now we're going to get to when the regel conflicts with Avelut. And at what point do we cancel Avelut? Do we cancel Shloshim? How does it work? So a lot of these issues we talked about before, now we're going to see them again. If you bury a dead person three days before the regel, which means you already had three days of shiva, we talked about before that possibly the first, only the first day of shiva is on a Torah level, if you say shiva's Torah, right? And there's this distinction between day number one and the rest of the days. There's also a distinction between the first three days and the rest of the seven. Okay, there's kind of levels within so if you've already done three days, then Shiva is canceled by the holiday. Now you might be thinking, what do you mean? Even an hour, Shiva is canceled by the holiday. We're going to see that opinion on Daf Kaf. That is not the opinion of the Tana of our Mishnah. Then, so again, Shloshayimim kodam l'rega, b'teilayimenu gzerat Shiva. So Shiva gets canceled. Shmona, if there's eight days before, so then you finish your Shiva and you have another day, b'teilayimenu gzerat shloshim, comes the holiday and cancels the shloshim. They say that Shabbat counts as one of your seven days, and it doesn't cancel out Shiva like the holiday does. The holidays stop the Shiva, and they don't count as days of Shiva. Right? They're not part of any count. So now, why is there a different Shabbat and Regal? So a few different answers are given. I'll mention two of them. One is that Shabbat is a din of simcha. This is the one we usually hear. It's a din of simcha. Because it's simcha, you can't have abelut conflict with simcha. Shabbat, there is oneg Shabbat, but it's not the same as simcha. Simcha is real happiness, and that you can't experience with abelut. Okay, and they're real com conflicts. Um, that's one option. Another option is to say, well, realistically, this doesn't work. Because if Shabbat would cancel out Shiva, we'd almost never have seven days of Shiva. 
And every week you have Shabbat. So it makes no sense to say the Shabbos cancel Shiva. So that's another possibility. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Meshachara Beit HaMikdash Atzeret Kishabbat. He says, once the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, Shavuot is like Shabbat. It doesn't cancel out. Why? Because Shavuot is only one day. What does it matter? Time of the temple, not time of temple. Because when the temple, in other words, what they say is basically one day can't come and cancel a whole week of Shiva. A holiday with seven days could. So they say in the times of the temple, if you remember, we've talked about this before, if you've been learning the Daf for a while, which is there's a law of what we call Tashlumin, which is if you didn't do the sacrifice that you're supposed to bring on Shavuot, the Chagiga sacrifices, prelude to Masechet Chagiga, which is our next Masechet, then you can do it, you can make it up for the next six days. So that turns Shavuot in the time of the temple into a seven-day holiday. Because anyone who didn't bring it the first day would bring holiday sacrifices all those seven days. So it had more of a holiday status for longer than one day. Whereas once the temple's destroyed and there is no such concept, right, the only thing we have left of this is we actually don't say Tachanun all those days. The tachanun prayer is not said on happy occasions, on holidays, so it's not said on all those days, but that's a very small remnant of this halacha. We don't really treat it as a holiday, in which case it doesn't cancel Shiva, according to Rabbi Leezer. Rabban Gamliel, we can see all different opinions about what holidays do, what holidays don't. Rosh Hashanah v'yom kipurim kirigalim. He goes the opposite way, which is say Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, which are also one day. Remember, you know, Rosh Hashanah ends up two days. But theoretically, it's really only one day. Are like the holidays, and they actually cancel the holiday, the Shiva, uh, they cancel morning as well, because they're happy days. We don't hold like Rabban Gamliel. We don't hold like Rabbi Eliezer, which you were probably thinking. You know that. Ela, Atzeret, Kirigalim, Rosh Hashanah V'Yom Kippur, V'Yom Kippurim, Kish Shabbat. Okay, the Yamim Noraim are called Yamim Noraim. They're not exactly also happy Simcha oriented days. They are, but they also have a very certain amount of seriousness about them. Those don't cancel out the Shiva. But Atzeret is a holiday. It's one of the three Regalim. It's true, it's only one day, but it's a day of Simcha and it cancels out Shiva. Okay. Now we're going to start with the Gemara. Amarav, Gzerat Batlu, Yamim Lo Batlu. When we say that if you started, eight, you did eight days already, and then comes the holiday, it cancels out Shloshim. So it cancels Shloshim, but Yamim Lo Batlu. It doesn't cancel out the days. The count of 30 days, we're going to talk about this soon, what this means. V'chein Amar Rav Huna, Gzerat Batlu, Yamim Lo Batlu. He says the exact same thing as Rav, but here comes Rav Shesha with a, dis- a dissenting opinion. Rav Shesha, Tamar, Afilu Yamim Nami Batlu. Even days get canceled. Meaning, right, Shloshim is over entirely. Now we're going to go back to Rav and Rav Huna. My time, Yamim Lo Batlu. Why do they say days aren't canceled? What does that mean? Here, it's not exactly a typical my time, which is what's the reason. It's more like, what do you mean by that? She'im lo gilech erev ha-regel, asur legalech achal ha-regel. If you don't shave before the regel, then you can't shave after the regel till the 30 days are over. Why is this? It actually makes perfect logical sense. Because the whole reason you're, not, you're allowed to shave before is because we don't want you to go into the holiday disheveled. But if you don't shave and you go into the holiday disheveled, then we're not going to give you any extra dispensation after and say, oh, now you can shave. Right? It's almost like a slap in the face to the holiday. So it doesn't. So that's why they say you can't do it. Your shloshim days are still there. If you didn't cut your hair or shave before, then you can't do it after until actually the 30 days pass. Now we're going to bring a vahatanya. Vahatanya usually means... And behold, in a brayta it says, which is either usually brought as a proof or a question. More times than more times than not, it's actually a question. Here, it's going to be used a little differently. It's actually going to be a support, although I will tell you that some people disagree with this because it really should have used a different term if what I'm saying is true. And it's not just me saying it. Rashi says it. Siata. It's coming as a proof, meaning as a support for what we just said, which is that there's these two dissenting opinions about whether... The shloshim is canceled entirely, or the days still remain, especially if you didn't shave before, then you're not going to be able to shave after, or particularly if you didn't. So here comes the shiva. If you bury someone three days before the holiday, then you have no shiva. Eight days before, you're not going to have any shloshim. Umigalech erev And then you shave on Erev HaRegel, Im Lo Gilech Erev HaRegel, 
As to the galach acharei but if you didn't shave on the era of Arega, then you're not allowed to shave after. That's Rav and Rav Huna. Abba Shaul Omer, and this is going to match Rav Sheshet, mutar the galach acharei you're allowed to. Kashem shavit svar shlosham v'fatel v'kzirat shiva. Just like three days of Shiva will cancel out all of Shiva if the holiday comes, it's a comparison. Just like it does it there, it does it here as well. That, right? That the Shiva will cancel out Shloshim, and therefore there is no Shloshim after, and that's Rav Sheshet. Now the Gemara asks, one minute. He says, Shiva is Mevatel at Shiva, Shloshim. Now, didn't we say in the Mishnah, Shmona? You have to have eight days before for it to cancel it. And this Machloket we actually saw previously, the famous Machloket Abba Shaul and the Rabbis. Doesn't it say in the Mishnah eight days in order to cancel Shloshim? Oh no, it's because Abba Shaul holds that a little bit of the day is counted as if the whole day was, was done. Which means, Yom Shvi Ole Lekan Ulekan. Right? He says the seventh day in the sh- your morning, Shiva is over in the morning. That means your Shloshim already kicks in in the morning. So therefore, you only need seven days. But the Mishnah was going according to the rabbis who require eight days because they say, you don't say Miktzad Yom Kikulo, the whole seventh day is Shiva, therefore only the eighth day is Shloshin. So if the holiday was on day eight, then it actually doesn't cancel because you had to have some, you had to have had some Shloshin before the holiday starts. Amar Rav Chista, Amar Ravina Bar Shila. Halacha ke Abba Shaul. Okay, the halacha is like Abba Shaul. We pass the okay, We're now going to see a whole slew of opinions about who we hold like and in what situation. And in what way would the rabbis agree, in which case would they concede to Abba Shaul? Halacha ke Abba Shaul. So according to Rav Chista in the name of Ravina Bar Shila, we hold like Abba Shaul. Miktzad ayon kekula. Part of the day is considered as if it's been a whole day. Umodim chachamim la'aba Shaul. They will agree with him in what case. We had learned this before. Kishachal shmini shelo liyot b'shabbat erev arega. If the eighth day falls out on Shabbat, which is erev arega, that's the day right before the Yantif. Shemutar legalach be'erev Shabbat. They hold that in that case you can actually shave on the seventh day. Because you really should be able to shave on the eighth day because the Shoshim does start on Shabbat. Because remember, Shabbos counts as a day. So that does count as the first day of Shloshim. So the regal is canceled. The problem is that would allow you to shave, but it would allow you to shave on Shabbat. And Shabbat, Shabbat, you can't shave, so we allow you to shave before Shabbat. Now who, according to, does this go? What Rav Amram says in the name of Rav. Avel, kevan On the last day, once everyone who came to mourn, to mourn with him, to console him, left, or her, left, mutar b'rechitza. The mourner is allowed to wash their bodies. In other words, the shiva ends when the people leave, and then, right, even though the seventh day isn't over yet. So obviously, Kiman, right, who is this like? Ka'aba Shaul, right, like Abba Shaul, who said, Miksat hayom kikulo. Amar Rabbi, halakha ka'aba Shaul biyom shiva. He says, on the seventh day we hold like Abba Shaul, meaning the seventh day, Miksat hayom kikulo, your shiva ends in the morning. Umodim chachamim la'aba Shaul b'yom shloshim. The rabbis actually, in a, we hold like Abba Shaul against the rabbis about day number seven. The rabbis think day number seven, the whole day is of, is shiva. But the rabbis agree with Abba Shaul b'yom shloshim. They agree with him when it comes to shloshim. Damrina miktzad yom kikulo. That we do hold part of the day is cancels it out. On the 30th day, you can actually shave once the morning passes, or once a small part of the morning passes, you can already shave. Rava Amar, so that's a different approach, that the rabbis agree about the Shloshim. Until now, we thought the rabbis don't agree with him. We just hold like Abba Shaul. Rava Amar, Abba Shaul b'yom Shloshim, ve'en alachaka Abba Shaul b'yom Shiva. He holds, we hold like the rabbis when it comes to Shiva. You need an entire seventh day, right? We don't do this, but that's how Rava held. And when it comes to the Shloshim, they still disagree, but we hold like Abba Shaul. We're lenient when it comes to Shloshim, we're stringent when it comes to Shiva. In Hardea, they said we're going to pass the in both directions. Why is that? Because Shmuel said, We saw this before, that Shmuel is always lenient when it comes to Avelu. So therefore, we're going to be lenient, and in all the directions, we're going to hold like Abba Shaul to be lenient. Shloshim Yom Inalan. Where do we get this idea of Shloshim? How do we know it's 30 days? Where did we come up with this idea that you can't cut your hair or shave for 30 days? Some people also know laundry. Yalif Pera Pera Minazir. It's a Shavar from the word Pera that appears by a Nazir and the word Pera that appears by 
Avel Ktiv Hacha. Rashechem al tifrau, that's by Aaron and his sons, don't let your hair grow long, which again, we learn from there that a regular Avel needs to grow their hair long. Uchtiv hatam gadel pevas arosho, a nazir supposed to grow his hair long, right? Can't cut his hair. So mal alan shloshim, afkan shloshim, just like a nazir. A standard nazirut is 30 days. That means if you didn't specify how long you want to be a nazir for, you're a nazir for 30 days. So likewise here, it's 30 days. How do we know there it's 30 days? Right? There are commentaries, by the way, who try to come up with more connections between a, naz- a nazir and um, a mourner. Vahatam from where do we get it from? The mourner is 30, uh, that a nazir is 30 days. stam nazirut shloshim yo. An average nazirut is 30 days. Where does he get it from? That didn't help us yet. My taima. What's the reason? Amar kra kadoshi hiye. Says by the nazir, he will be sanctified. And Yihiye Bigamatria is Tlatin. The word Yihiye is 10, 10, 5, and 5. That's 30, and that's how we get it. Tlatin Havu. Amaravuna Bere de Rav Yoshua. Hako Modim Kishachal Shishaloliot Erev Aregel Shasur Burchitzada Erev. Ravuna, the son of Rav Yoshua, says, everyone agrees that when the 30th day falls out on the Erev Aregel, that, I'm sorry, the third day, my mistake. The third day is Erev HaRegel. Remember, the Regal comes in and cancels Shiva. Even though we said Miktzad Yom Kikulo, in this case, we don't hold Miktzad Yom Kikulo because you didn't finish your Shiva yet. So you have to wait till the very end of the day and you can only wash at the end of that day. Okay? All, uh, all laws of Avelut apply until just before the sun sets. Amar Rav Nechemia Barei De Rav Yoshua Eshkachtinu L'Rav Papi L'Rav Papa Diyatwe V'Ka'amri Halacha K'Rav Huna Barei De Rav Yoshua Rav Nechemia, the son of Rav Yoshua, says, I was with Rav Pape and Rav Papa, and they said the halacha is like this law of Rav Huna, the son of Rav Yoshua, that you have to wait till nighttime, or till almost before nighttime to wash. Iga de Amre, some people say, and this is just a difference of who said it, there was Rav Nechemia Bredo Rav Yosef, not Rav Nechemia Bredo Rav Yoshua, who said, Ashkachtinu le Rav Pape le Rav Papa, same thing, I saw them. And they add a third person here, le Rav Huna Bredo Rav Yoshua, and then it's that they were with Rav Huna. Not that they said, we hold like Rav Huna. They were with Rav Huna, Bereid Rav Yoshua. And they all said, So the conclusion is the same. It's just a matter of, did they pass in like, like um, Rav Huna, Bereid Rav Yoshua? Or is it with all three of them were sitting together and they all three said the Salacha? Ba'amine Abaye Mirabah. Abai asked Rabbah the following question. This is the very end of our daf. Abai asked Rabbah, who was his adopted father, he says, I want to know. Kavru beregel. If they buried someone on the regel. Regel olelo l'minyan shloshim. O en regel olelo l'minyan shloshim. When we have a regel. Now this, by the way, I forgot to mention this in the Mishnah. We said that Shabbat counts as a day of the holiday, of the Avelut. But a holiday doesn't count as a day of Avelut. Now. We said that the, the holiday cancels Shiva, so of course it doesn't count as a day of Avelut. But we said it meant also it doesn't count as a day of Shloshim, right? And then, but also, more importantly, what if someone's buried on the Regal? So you count, right? The days of the Regal don't count as days of Shiva, right? If someone was died the third day of the Regal, we don't say, oh, you already had a few days of Shiva. You only finish up at the end. Here's another relevance of it, okay? Which is, if someone was buried on the holiday... I'm sorry, uh, the, if someone was buried before the holiday, we're going to see it's relevant. Because in the Mishnah, it said the first three days. It didn't say what happens if the person died one or two days before the regal. So the assumption is that when the Mishnah says the regal doesn't count, that means if you had two days before, then you're going to have to, the regal doesn't count as days of Shiva, like Shabbat would, and you have to start counting another five days after. And that we're going to see inside here explicitly. So now here comes his question. Kavru b'regel, regel olelo l'miyan shloshim, o en regel olelo l'miyan shloshim. If you bury someone on the holiday, now we don't count those as days of shiva, but maybe they count as shloshim days. And he's going to say like this. L'miyan shiva lo kemabayale. I'm not asking about shiva days. I know that for sure they don't count as shiva days. Dilo nage mitzvah shiva b'regel, because there is no shiva on the regel. But ki kemabayale l'miyan shloshim. Now what can't you do on shloshim? You can't cut your hair and you can't shave. Now, on the regal, you can't do that either. So, d- do you say, Since the mitzvah of the shloshim apply on the regal, what's the halacha? Maybe they do count as days of shloshim. Because in the end, you just need 30 days that you don't cut your hair. And that starts maybe from even in the middle of the holiday. 
Amarle, eno ole. He says, no, no, no. Those days don't count. Your shiva starts after, and your shloshim starts counting from your shiva. So, um, actually, sorry, I don't know why I said that. Sorry, we're going to see this other in the question. This is where it comes up with the two days and the five days. Okay, 80 days. So now, Abayah is going to ask a question from the following Tanitic source. We're not going to get to his question yet. It's a long source. We're going to continue with it tomorrow, but we'll start with the first part of the bright time. This is the case I mentioned before. If you bury your dead two days before the holiday, and then, according to what we've learned so far, Shiva won't cancel that, even though that's not what we practice today. You count five days after the regal. Okay, basically the regal just, it's like pushing a pause button and then pushing play again when the holiday ends. So now, in those days after the holiday, you're in Shiva. So your work is done by others. You can't work. Your servants, your maid servants, can do work in your house as long as they do it without people noticing. This is interesting. We'll talk about this more tomorrow. People don't come and pay shiva calls according to this. Because they actually paid shiva calls during the regal. Now, again, we don't have this kind of reality anymore. But in those days, it seemed that people would still come visit. It's just that your laws of shiva, of not, you know, whatever kind of laws of shiva that applied during that week, would not, would be basically suspended during the holiday. But... You still, people did still come visit them. Okay, we'll talk about this more tomorrow. With this, we'll finish our daf, and we will pick up from here and explain what Abayah's question on Rabbah is. Again, Rabbah said to him that if you buried in the regal, your, right, your shloshim is going to only count starting after the regal. The clock doesn't start ticking from when the person died. Have a great day, everybody. We'll meet up tomorrow, and already I'll wish you an early Chodesh Tov.